Welcome to episode number two of Procreate Printables, where I share how to take your artwork from Procreate and turn it into something you can hold in your hands. In this week's video, we're going to be creating a fall pattern card utilizing a diamond repeat. We'll paint our pattern tile in Procreate, and then I'll show you a really quick and easy way to preview that pattern and make sure everything's working correctly. After that, we'll export our pattern tile, lay it all out on our greeting card template, which is totally free, then we'll print it and embellish it with some gold details and after that it will be done. So let's hop into Procreate and get started. We'll need a square canvas to make sure our pattern is perfectly seamless. So the size that I'm using is 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels at 300 dpi. I work in the display p3 color profile but if you don't have access to that then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine. I'm going to show you a really easy way to create a seamless pattern. I go over a bunch of different methods in my floral patterns in Procreate course which I'll leave a link to on screen and in the video description. If you love patterns and you just want to dig in and learn everything there is to know about patterns in Procreate, then that's the course you'll want to check out. But for this one, we're going to keep things super simple and very beginner friendly. And what I'm going to do is come into my Symmetry block brushes. This is a brush set that comes with that course, but I'm giving you the diamond one for free today so you can follow along. You'll have everything you need. So all you want to do is select that free brush that is also in the video description and just tap it in with your finger. And once it appears, you're just going to select it and then down here hit fit to canvas and that will fill the entire canvas with the shape. The strategy behind this is we fill our artwork in the white area and then it will repeat in these other corners, but you don't want to extend anything beyond the white area. So whatever you put in here, make sure it doesn't move into the gray area. Next, I'm going to create a brand new layer. We can label a layer one as our symmetry block. And on this brand new layer, we're going to stamp in a template. This part is completely optional. I'm going to head into my bouquet maker brush set in the supporting florals. These are just flower templates to make the floral drawing process a lot quicker. I'm going to be using supporting number 19. You can freehand your flowers if you'd like. I like using these just because, it, like I said, it speeds up the entire process. I think I want this top flower to fill more of this diamond, so we're going to see how far I can push it. I still want it to feel centered though. Now I'm going to make a few adjustments. Since we have all the space over here, it's a really good opportunity for me to just put in some extra leaves to balance it all out to make it feel more like a diamond. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a brand new layer and then in my flat extras, you can grab the edgy ink brush and all I'm going to do, let me reduce the size, is put another leaf element that looks similar to these leaves that kind of goes right behind here. I just want it to be more balanced than it is right now. So just draw some leaves and fill it out. If you're freehanding this, you just keep filling up the diamond as much as you would like. And I also like putting some of my elements behind other elements to make them interact a little bit more. So it seems like it was always like this to begin with. For consistency, I'm just going to add in some extra leaves onto these berry elements. We'll add some down here too to fill this out. That's feeling a little bit better. I think I want to move this over just a bit more. So I'm going to select both of these and toggle it over. Now that I've got my base together and I'm happy with it, I can merge those two layers together. And I'm just going to label this one outline. And now we can start painting them in. I'm going to reduce the opacity of my outline so I can see what I paint on top a little bit easier. You can use any brush set that you would like for this. I've decided to use my Gouache Lovers brush set. The streaky semi-transparent brush is my favorite brush that I've ever made. So it's kind of my default whenever I want something to look beautiful and be guaranteed to look beautiful. Beautiful. Let's paint this in. The first thing I'm going to do is paint in our flowers. So on this brand new layer, I've got my warm cider color palette loaded in. I'll leave a link to this right in the video description. This is a free color palette and I'm going to grab the dark purple first and I'm just going to paint in these petals. So what I like to do, because this brush is pressure sensitive, I can go a little pressure, lots of pressure, a little pressure, and I can get petals and leaf shapes really quickly. And with these ones, I like coming back through and putting another stroke because there's a subtle shift in hue with this brush, so it feels more painterly. So I like taking advantage of that. And then I'm also going to paint in these petals down here of this flower. Same color, same process. Let's 
let's take care of our other flower now, which is going to be this one over here. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'm going to choose the mid purple right there, the second one on the top row. Same exact process for these petals. Let's add in some of our details now. I'm going to create a brand new layer above the first petal layer. So it's the dark one. Create a brand new layer right above it. And I'm going to choose my brown color. So it's the last one on the second row. And we're going to do this transition area right into the stem. And then over here for this flower, we're going to create a brand new layer right above that one. And we're going to grab the dark purple. Let me turn off that layer so we can see. We've got stamen elements right here. These are like the anthers. So I'm going to paint these in a little bit more detail than the other ones. Now we're ready to add some petal details because it's looking a little plain if I just leave it with two colors for each flower. So what I like to do is sandwiched right between the stamen and the petals for this flower over here, we're going to create a brand new layer. And we'll select the pink color, so it's the first one on the second row. And all I'm going to do, you might want to reduce the size of your brush a bit. I'm going to come down to like 4%. And I'm just going to put some lines up, just to show that there's a little bit of detail here. And some contrast in color, which will look pretty in the print. Don't think too hard about it. They're just lines that go up different distances. That one's all set, so now we need to take care of these ones. So once again, create a layer that's sandwiched between the petals and this transition area into the stem. So I'll create a brand new layer right above the petal layer. Same exact color, same exact process. We've got our flowers all set now, and we just need to add in our foliage. So we can group all of our flower elements together. We'll label these ones flowers. And now we can start adding in our stems, our leaves, and our foliage. So we're going to create a brand new layer right above the outline layer. And for the stem coming off of all of the flowers, I've chosen this darker brown color. So select that. I still have a streaky semi-transparent brush selected. Brush size is going to be around 5% and we're just gonna draw it in. And remember, you can change up the pressure and that'll give it more of an organic feel, a little variation. And now for the leaves, I'm going to increase the size a bit more, coming up to like 15%, and same process as before with painting the leaves in. And I'm only painting the leaves associated directly with these flower stems. I'm not doing the extra ones that I painted in. Let's turn off our outline just to see how everything looks, all of our connection points. I think I want this part to be a little bit thicker, so I'm going to draw an additional line up. All we have left now are our leaves and our berries, and I actually I want to do the berry stems the same color as the flower stems, so I'm just going to paint those in as long as I'm already on this layer, and there's only three of these. I also think I'm going to add just a few more berries here since I've only got Two, I think there's an opportunity to add a few more. Since these are going to be red in color, I can just add a little bit more color in here. So I'm going to do that and I'll probably add another one right here. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's add in our berries now. So right above that stem layer, I can label this one stems. Let's paint in our berries. I'm gonna grab the red color and just make sure you're varying the size of these. It'll be more interesting that way. And then the last thing is just the leaves. So the leaves are gonna go behind everything. So tap on the outline layer, create a brand new layer, and grab the kind of tan color right here. And we'll just paint these in. And if it feels like you should add more or less from what your outline or how your template looks, feel free to do that. Nothing says you have to stay strict to your outline. And we've got all of our leaves in now, so let's turn off our outline. Zoom out a bit and see how that feels. I like it, but there's definitely a little bit of a gap here. So I'm going to see about just adding a few more leaves in here just to fill this gap a little. 
I'm good with moving forward with this. And I did want to mention with this diamond shape, don't feel like you've got to go straight to the edges all the way around. We still want it to have this unique organic feel to it. And if it starts looking too much like a diamond, even though it's on a diamond repeat, it's just going to end up looking really blocky and you won't be able to see the beautiful larger shapes that you've spent time on. All that said, it's time to make this into a seamless repeat now. So the first thing we need to do is add a temporary background layer. This will help to make sure that all of the edges line up properly. So do not skip this part. We'll get rid of it later so it really doesn't matter what color you make it. I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'll just grab a random like gray color, like a light gray, and pop it in. Next we want to group everything together, including that temporary background layer. We're going to label this one artwork. Next you want to have five groups of artwork. So we need to make some duplicates. We're going to slide it to the left and choose duplicate and keep doing this until you have five of them. Once you have five of them, you can turn off the others. We're going to come up here, go to canvas, drawing guide, edit drawing guide. Down here, increase your grid size all the way to max and you'll see crosshairs and I can increase the thickness and the opacity so you can see it a little bit better. And make sure it's a dark color. You can change the color of your guides by tapping on this color bar up here and then hit done. Now we've got our four quadrants. We're going to take our first artwork group, select it. Down here, tap on snapping, turn on your magnetics, turn on your snapping, and max out distance and velocity. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Next, you want to take this and you're just going to slide the corner over. You're not going to rescale at all. You're just going to drag this entire thing over until it snaps. Grab the next group. Do the exact same thing. The next one, we have to turn it on. And then drag it over. Wait for it to snap. You'll see those yellow lines up here and that's how you know that you're in the right position. And then this one's down here. And this would be fine as it is, but I always like having one in the middle. So that's what this fifth one is for. We're going to take it and drag it all the way to the top. Make sure it doesn't drop into one of your other ones. Turn on the visibility, toggle this down, and this time we're just going to turn off that temporary background color. So turn that off, and now you can see we've got our artwork right here and the repeats around it. We need to remove that temporary background color now from all of our other groups. So just toggle each one down and remove it by turning the visibility off. Obviously, we can still see our symmetry blocks. We can turn that off too. We no longer need our guidelines. So you can come back to your wrench and just toggle off drawing guide. And now we need to see how this is going to look when it's repeated. So normally you would group everything together and you'd rescale it down in each of those and you hope that everything lines up all right. But I've got a much faster way. What you're going to do is group all of your groups together, duplicate it, it's important to always have a duplicate because all of these ones, this is your raw file. You have all of your artwork on separate layers, so you can go in and edit things whenever you need to. That part's really important if you ever need to change anything in the future, which happens more times than it doesn't. I'm going to turn off the duplicate. This is our layered group. This group we need to flatten. So tap on the layer thumbnail and choose flatten. Now all of those layers are compressed into this one layer. We can turn it on and off. Now I'm going to turn my iPad so it's a little bit easier to see what's going to happen here. So let me move all this stuff out of the way. I am horizontal orientation now. I'm going to toggle up from the bottom of my screen, grab Safari and drag it over. You're going to go to the URL patternplayground.com. This is a free tool that my husband programmed and developed specifically for testing patterns. And if you choose to check out my Floral Patterns and Procreate class, you'll see all the different cool ways that you can use this. But this will make it simple for you to test any pattern you create and see how it looks when it's repeated. So I'm going to go into my layers, this flattened layer that we made. I'm just going to tap on it and then drag it over and drop it. And you can see it starts repeating, but that's not how we want it to look because this is doing a half drop by default and we created a full drop pattern. So tap on full drop and now you can adjust the scale of it. So you can see what it looks like zoomed out and zoomed in. You get an idea of that repeat. And if you're happy with it, then you can move forward. 
So for the sake of time, I'm going to move forward with this one. But if I were to edit it at all, I would probably make this leaf element have more parts of it come over here. So it feels a little bit more balanced, but we're gonna move right along so you can see how to put this all together. I'm gonna come back into Procreate. So you can just tap on the three dots now and hit close. Now that we know that it works as a seamless repeat, we need to export this pattern now. If you would like a different background color, now's the time to add it in. And you can just create a brand new layer down here or you can tap on background color and change it. To save on ink, I'm going to keep mine as white and I'm going to tap on the wrench, hit share, tap on TIFF, and then just hit save image and that'll save it to your camera roll. I've done a few test prints already with this design so I could see what types of color adjustments I wanted to make for my specific printer. For this project, we're going to be using double-sided matte photo paper. You want to get double-sided because a lot of the single-sided ones have the logo of the company on the back of them. So if you have double-sided, then the inside of your card will also be white. So that's why double-sided is important here. And the matte photo paper just produces gorgeous results on inkjet printers. So I would always recommend going with matte over glossy photo paper. And if you want to see the full process of creating test print templates and test prints where all the this will make sense. Check out the video that I posted last week. I'll link to it on screen and in the video description. Everything you need to know is in that video. So I've looked at all of my test prints to decide what color adjustments I needed to make for the color palette that I'm using with the printer that I have on the paper that I'm printing on. That's why it's so important to do test prints. It really guarantees that your final print will look its best. So when I did this test print, I liked how the original came out, but I just wanted it to be a little bit more saturated because it's fall where you get some really bright colors along with those muted colors as well. So I was really torn between this is soft light and this is a saturation adjustment and this is my original and I like the brightness that I got from soft light but I started losing the tan color in these leaves they ended up turning more yellow they definitely did an overlay you can see how yellow this looks compared to the original so I knew right away overlay wasn't going to be it but soft light made a lot of my pinks and purples brighter which I, I really liked especially the red so I like this one but the leaves are still getting a little bit yellow but on the saturation I kept the tan color but I lost a little bit of the brightness but it's still brighter than the original so I decided that I'm going to go with the saturation but I'm going to pull it back just a smidge I'm going to do 80% saturation instead of hundred so those are the settings that you'll see me use for the next part which is getting our card all ready to print so we're going to lay it out now I gave away a free template last week we're going to use the exact same template this week that link is right in the video description it's a completely free procreate greeting card template that you can use and reuse all right here's that template last week we used it in a horizontal format because we are creating a vertical greeting card. This week I want to show you how you can adapt it to use it as a horizontal greeting card. So I'm just turning it. That's all you have to do and then you're ready to go. And if you'll remember we've got our bleed line. That's when you have artwork extending beyond your canvas bounds which is what we're going to be utilizing for this card. You have your cut marks, your score marks, and there's an outline to kind of show you where the card is going to fold. So what we need to do, you can see we've got our trim and score, our bleed, and our outline layers. We're going to make sure our artwork layer is selected, tap on your wrench, hit add, insert a photo, and grab the exported TIFF of our pattern. Now you need to decide how big or how small you'd like your pattern to appear on your card. I want it relatively large because if it gets too small, we start losing the details that we drew in on our flowers. So I'm going to scale it down again. Once again, you want to make sure you've got magnetics and snapping turned on. Like this is probably a good size to start and I can just line it right up with that bleed corner and now I need to duplicate it and slide it over and it should snap when it's right next to it. There we go. And now I'm going to pinch these and now I can make another duplicate of that. You just wanna make sure, like I'm gonna end up going off the paper here and it will crop it. So this is fine as long as you remember that if you need to move it over that this crop line doesn't end up on your card. So this is okay. Let me make sure that that is lining up okay. I can deselect. You can zoom in here and just make sure that you don't have any weird gaps. And because we've got snapping turned on, it should have snapped right into place. So I'm okay with moving forward with this. I'm gonna merge these together again. Now we're going to repeat this vertically. 
So wait until it snaps, inspect, no white hairlines right there. So now we can merge these together and let's see how many more we got to do. Inspect, pinch. All right, this one's going to end up going off the page, but that's totally fine. Everything looks good. Merge, and now we're all set. If you'd like to crop your pattern a little bit, you can. Just make sure you don't crop too much. I'm just trying to save on ink. That's why I cropped, <laughs> to be totally honest. And I like the scale of this. This feels good. So that's what I'm going to move forward with. I like that you can see that it's detailed and pretty. And if you'll remember, we decided to add a saturation adjustment of 80%. So what I'm going to do now that I've got my artwork right where I want it and the scale that I want it at, I'm going to duplicate this, change the blend mode to saturation, which is from my test prints. And then I decided I was going to do it at 80%. So there we go. My adjustments all in there now. Create a brand new layer. I want to put a message on the front. This part's totally optional. I'm going to make it my darkest purple. I'm going to choose my flat semi-transparent brush. Make sure it's all the way up to 100. And I'm just going to do a paint streak across. Get the size you want it. I need to turn off magnetics and snapping so I can rotate it a little bit. And then create a brand new layer. I'm going to change to my liner brush and I'm going to grab the pink color and write my message, but you can use typeable text too. We're all set to print now. So before we go to exporting this to print it, this part is super important and you'll ruin your print if you forget to do this. And I am definitely guilty of forgetting this. So always make sure you come back to your layers and make sure you turn off the layers that are labeled turn off. You want to keep this top one, but turn off the visibility of this layer and this layer because you don't want those to be part of your final card. Once you've done that, now all you have are your cut marks and your score marks. So now we can print this. And in order to do that, we're just going to hit the wrench, share, tiff. Down here, you'll want to hit print. For really any type of print that you do that you're going to give to someone or use for something, you always want to change these settings. So tap on media and quality, toggle this up to best, and under media type, change this to photo. And then hit media and quality to toggle back. So down here you can see now media and quality, photo, best quality. It's letter size. Since our matte photo paper is letter size, we want to make sure that we're using the same size as that paper. Print and color. Everything looks good. Now we are ready to print. So I'm going to hit print. Here is the final print out of my home printer ready to be cut down. So if you saw last week's video, then you already know how we're going to be cutting where the cut marks are and scoring where the score mark is. So for the score, I use a utility knife. I just think it's far more stable than an X-Acto blade. And for score marks, instead of trying to cut halfway, I just flip this over and I use the back side of the blade and it gives me a perfect score mark every single time. For the cut marks, once again, you just want to remember to not cut all the way through the paper. So a really easy way to always make sure you don't do that is just to go from one cut line to the other cut line. And you'll remember we had our bleed line and now you can see why it's so important to extend the artwork beyond the edges of your final card. You get perfectly flushed prints. Close my blade. And now where our score line is, we can just fold right along that. And our card is done. If you just want to use it like this, you're good to go. I can never help myself. I've always got to add in some kind of embellishment. And this time I'm going to be using my fine tip gold Posca marker. And I'm just going to be adding a faux shadow to my lettering. And if you're new to doing this, I do have a cheat sheet on this. That'll make it really easy if you're unsure where to place the marks as you're going. And I'll link that cheat sheet right in the video description. While I'm doing this, I just want to say a massive thank you for all the feedback on last week's video. I am so happy that you want to see this series continue because I love doing stuff like this. And I'm currently making a list of all future videos of converting different types of artwork into printables. 
So if there's something that you'd like to see in this series, please put it in the comment below. I read all the comments. I'm putting new things on my list every day. So I'll make sure to include your suggestions on that list. All right, we've got our gold all complete now. And there is our finished fall pattern card from Procreate all the way to print. Once again, links to everything in this video are right in the video description. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.